I go hard cuz. Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me make sure all my screens are up, child. Oh my gosh. It's been a long few days. I got back from Austin, Texas about a day or so ago. Um, it was nice. You know, it was good, you know, getting a chance to see a lot of fellow tea sippers down there. So shout out to everybody I met down in Austin. But I will say this. I will say this about Austin. I felt like y'all really don't be turned up like that. Like, we went to a lot of really nice spots out there, like a lot of like really cool, you know, contemporary clubs and lounges. And everybody was literally like this. In their phones, taking pictures. And you know me as a tea sipper, okay? We dance, we kick it, we have a good old funky time. I'm gonna need it to not just be me and Janissa and like two tea sippers dancing in the club because everybody else is just sitting there. So that's the only thing I didn't like about Austin. I'm like, okay, come on, Texas. I'm gonna need y'all to show me something, okay? But a lot of people that I met were saying that it's way more turned up and lit in Dallas and Houston. So I'm gonna definitely have to be, you know, go down to Dallas. I've never been there. I've been to Houston once. So I think my next trip to Texas will be Dallas because Austin, like I said, I had a good time. The people that we met were really cool, but as far as like y'all's clubs, y'all literally just sit around in y'all's phones. It's like, what am I missing here? I'm going to need y'all to get up and turn up, okay? But I hope you guys are doing good. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the live. Um, I wanted to go live a little bit earlier today. It's nice and bright. The sun is actually out. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving my new camera. I'm really liking this camera. It doesn't have me washed and you know what I'm saying? You can still see my brown skin. So nobody should be accusing me of bleaching anymore. Um, shout out to the idiots who think that, you know, lighting doesn't apply to dark skin people. But um, anyhow, it's been a long few days, but I'm glad to be back home with good internet and everything else. So we have a lot to get into today, but before I do a uh, quick announcement, um, we got to re-up on our tea, okay? So I'm going to post the information in the chat. If you want to get some more tea, we just re up. We had the hair, skin, and nail tea available. The men's tea is available. So make sure you guys go to my Amazon shop. And if some of the mods could post that as well, but that is the link I just posted in the chat um, for the tea that everybody's been asking for. Just get it on Amazon. Um, right now, I just took the tea website offline just because it's having issues communicating with Amazon. So just buy it directly off of Amazon, but the link is in the chat. So thank you all for your support when it comes to my tea, honey, okay? Um, the nail teas, definitely get my nails right. They're growing back. Y'all know I had cut my nails off for the new year. So they're starting to come back. So I'm hoping by the summertime, I'll have a little bit more length. You know what I mean? Y'all know I like my long natural nails. So yeah, I hope y'all are doing good. So anyhow, we got to talk about all this stuff that's been going on. So as you guys know, my good sis Cardi B dropped her latest single, um, Enough Miami. And I will say this, I did like it. Um, I, you, you know Cardi B is going to eat with the visuals. Her visuals are always going to be on point. That's just part of Cardi B's aesthetic. She's going to make sure she has like a lot of different pieces and stuff like that. Me personally, what I like the most is that it's just her on a track. Y'all know how I feel about these features with these new artists. I'm over the features. It's just way too many. It's almost like these girls can't stand on their own too. They got to have a buddy with them. They got to have somebody on their track. So I'm glad that the past two songs that she's dropped, it's just been her. Because um, we haven't had a solo feature from Cardi B since literally Bodak Yellow. Well, no, Up. Up, she was by herself on Up. But yeah, um, so I'm glad she did that. But I did like the video. So... In Cardi B style, she's been doing like a press run. And so she met up with Million Dollars Worth of Game. She did a sit down with um, Wallo and Gilly. And in that sit down, she was talking about people going 50-50 in relationships, like as far as bills and stuff like that. And so it caused quite a bit of controversy. So we're going to go ahead and um, let me pull that up here. Watch what she had to say to Gilly and Wallo about the situation. Give me just a second here so I can pull this up. Let 
Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and listen to this. From Cardi. All right. So so this is what I believe in, right? Like Me it's too. like if if you're gonna be the type of bitch that like a nigga you want a nigga to take care of you and everything, but it's like all right, you have to like pick a balance like it's like you cannot just be a bitch that's like oh my man take care of me he does the bills but it's like what do you do what are you contributing like it's like all right like you can't be complaining like oh i cook i clean every day it's like okay but you don't work you don't contribute to the house so i just feel like it's like so, and like sometimes people be like oh so this is like really controversial right cool i feel like it's very controversial when like be like oh i don't go 50 50 but it's like all right so if you and your man make the same amount of of money, right? Mm -hmm. But only your man is the one that paying all the bills. How y'all ever gonna save up to like buy a house or buy a business? Cause he's never gonna be able to afford to. So it's like certain things is like a, a joint thing to do. You, you know gotta what I'm work saying? I got a message for y'all from okay. Cardi. All right, so so this is but I just be feeling like sometimes people like the internet really be having people fucked up from like real reality type shit. So it's like it's like all right, so your your mom and dad used to work every single day, right? Mm -hmm. So your mom and dad used to work every single day so your mom could save her money and what buy purses and your dad just pay all the bills. That's not how it works. This no. is your mom was in the house cooking and cleaning every day. Your dad was working or they was both working to to pay both the bills. Like y'all be right. acting like y'all don't know what the fuck that is like no more. Like come on. And your mom money was your was your dad money and your dad money was your mom money. Like, it was it was like that. that it was it, like it's like I, that's what I'm saying like I'm not a feminist anymore because it's like sometimes it's like y'all bitches don't be living in the real world. Right. Y'all y'all not living there. Y'all be talking about my money is my money and his money is my money. Shit. I mean my money is my money and his money is my money. But like oh! my money is my money. Like my money is my money and his money is his money. But it's like but you know, like it's like we both spend money on each other and right. everything. And it's like if we want to go and everything, it's like I mean, like, it's like, it's like Okay. All right. So now she decided to backtrack on what she said with Gillian Wallow. Because she started catching heat. So let me go ahead and share this. 50 50. People started spreading it that I said that women and men have to go 50 50. And you know, like the men started praising me and the women started attacking me. And I wanna make this very fucking clear, right? I'm gonna make two things clear. First thing first, I never said that women and men have to go 50 50. I never said you have to go 50 50. Then you have cursing me out like it's like oh yeah you get cheated and you go 50 50 in your home blah, blah, blah. all right like I'm, i want to make this very clear me and Austin, we don't go 50 50. we bought a house and we went half and half on our atlanta home um we got two properties that we bought together two investment properties and i bought my home in jersey myself and he bought a condo in miami himself so you know like um we're part of the one percent uh and we're very fortunate that um we're very fortunate that we're very successful and everything. However, there was a point in life that I wasn't successful. You know what I'm saying? I grew up with regular parents. And let me tell you something. My mom, she did not work until I was six years old. She was a fucking princess, laid up, feet done in the Chinese store every single other day, whatever the fuck, doing good. We even had one of them big uh, TV screens. My dad lost everything. When I tell you my dad lost everything, my dad lost everything and um then my dad became a cab driver my dad became a cab driver and my mom had to get a job and my question to you is right when my dad lost everything and became a cab driver and he couldn't pay the the whole the rent with the bills and everything was my mom supposed to was she supposed to leave him was she supposed to leave leave him um one thing about it is even though my dad lost everything and he, and he had to start cab driving guess what I was never in a fucking shelter. There was not one time that the lights went out. There was not one time that we didn't have cable. The only time that we didn't have cable was when my mom and dad separated when I was like 13. But the point is, right, um, my dad was paying the rent and my mom was helping on the bills. Like, that's what partnership is uh, about. And then, um, then they started saving money. They started saving money because they wanted to buy uh, real estate upstate. You know foreclosure homes and rented and everything then my parents separated but you know he took his money and she kept her money then you have is cursing me out like is that all yeah you get all right <laughs> go back on the screen this is my issue okay 
Cardi will say something and then as soon as she gets backlash or people not agreeing with it, then she'll like come back to try and backtrack and no, but I didn't mean it that way. Cardi, stop explaining yourself to people. If you feel like, you know what I'm saying, people should come to the relationship and it should be 50-50, that is your stance. I don't think you have to change that for anybody because at the end of the day, th whatever works for you in your relationship is what works for you in your relationship. So I hate when people say something and then, you know, as soon as the backlash is severe, then it's, well, hold on, let me go ahead and explain. Y'all, I don't explain shit. I said what the fuck I said, and if you feel away, move the fuck around. It's that simple, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, it was just a bunch of words, Sally, and I don't think she needed to even like reiterate what she meant as far as that situation. Whatever works for her and Offset is what works for them. Now I'm going to say this as far as the whole 50-50 thing. Let me, let me keep it real. I think a lot of things have messed up people's mentalities when it comes to relationships and especially with social media. One, lifestyle content has definitely fucked up how a lot of females, especially young women, I would say about 30, 35-ish and under, how they see relationships and how they feel like they should be treated in relationships. And like I always say, you have to watch and be careful who you're listening to because people only show you a highlight reel of their life, right? So you guys see these beautiful women on Instagram and on TikTok, and they're showing you a soft life. Oh, I live a soft life, okay? Any wig I want, my man buys, nails done, hair done, everything did, Louis Vuitton bags, Chanel bags. And you know, so we're looking at their soft life, but you don't know what is going on behind the scenes. She might have a soft life to us on the internet, but might have hard lumps in the back of her head. You know what I'm saying? So you don't really know what people are going through. Another thing that has been very detrimental to how people think about relationships online is also the red pill community. So I think between the red pill community and those are the, the bitter brads, okay, of social media. These are bitter men, you know, who say that at 30 women are washed up, they're ran through and all this shit. Meanwhile, uh, it doesn't come for them though. So if they're ran through, who is fucking these women to make them ran through? It's y'all dusty dudes, it's y'all dusty Dustins, okay? And bitter brads. Why do you think these women who have been ran through have issues? It's because of y'all. So it's funny how this same ideology does not apply towards men or the red pill community, but it, it applies towards women. So a woman who's 35 and over, she's washed up. She just needs to off herself. And you know, once you hit 30, you're just over the hill. But meanwhile, a man who's 30, is just automatically desirable. Uh, uh hold your horses, bitch. Not all of y'all are uh, desirable once y'all hit 30. What are y'all doing with your life? Are you successful? Do you have yourself together? So you have a lot of people who not have access to sit on their platforms and talk who really should be quiet, who really should sit these conversations out. Because I think what a lot of adults have done, y'all have literally screwed up how these young men and women think and see each other. And it's really, really sad. This is why now when you go into the club, there's really no male-female interaction. Everybody's just on their phone. They're not talking. They're not really dancing. They're hanging with their clique that they came with. And that's not how it was when we were younger. Like, you went out to meet people. You went out to talk to people. And it's really sad. Um, <laughs> yes, I call them Dusty Dustins, okay? Um... So let me just play some clips. Like these are the videos that go viral and it just it just behooves me how some of these women think and and men. And a lot of them are nothing to write home about. So we're gonna watch this girl. She's out here giving advice to young women. And she's basically saying, if you're not, you know what I'm saying, if you're not willing to put her up and make her feel good, honey. She ain't fucking with you. So we're going to listen to her rant. Let me mute my mic. Here are some things I expect a man to pay for while I'm dating him or we're in a relationship. All dates. Like, sir, you're courting me. You're dating me. Like, you should be paying for the date. I don't pay for dates. So, I like, what are we doing here? Why would you ask me on a date if you're not going to pay for it? That doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I know you don't want to look at my crusty nails, and my nails are never crusty because I'm a model, so I have to get my nails done for shoots, and like, I usually upkeep my nails once every two weeks, so you gotta be able to afford my nails to be done once every two weeks. You just have to. 
to date me. Honestly, when it comes to hair, I have like that wash and go hair, but still products are expensive. Like my conditioners, my leave-ins, my detanglers, my co-washes, like hair is expensive. So I'm going to need you to front the bill on that. You know, like you need to help me out. Now, if you guys don't already know, Ubers are a given, a must. Like I do not pay for my transportation to these dates. You must get my Uber. That is just the standard. I don't like looking like a bush monkey, so waxing is a given. I feel like nobody wants to see that. So, yeah, you got my wax, right? You got my wax. Now, further down the line, I'm not talking about the first few dates, but eventually you're going to have to pay my rent. Like, girls got bills to pay, and I am too feminine to, like, pay for myself. So, I mean, I do that now, but, like, if I'm with you, why would I pay for my own bills? Oh, no. me cracking up somebody said who's mustiniana not <laughs> y'all called her mustachiana y'all are a mess um okay girl let me play this other one for y'all this other podcast so if you're making fifty thousand dollars don't date I'm, I'm just being for real. You're not ready to date. Again, I'm with you. Anyway. You're not ready to date. You're not ready to date because courtship costs. Okay. Everything costs. Okay. You can go for 22 walks in the park. Eventually, Shorty is going to need a sip of something. She's going to be thirsty. She's this thirsty. bottle of water is $3 in Atlanta. Let's oh, not play. Please. So if you don't have any expendable cash, don't date. And whatever that looks like for you, you might only make 50000 but you live in a shoe. And now you got expendable cash. Or get you a bottom of the barrel bitch that's going to date you when you have no money. If she doesn't have that expectation, and I'm going to tell you this right now, enjoy it while it lasts because eventually you're going to want to run. Because she doesn't stretch you. She doesn't make you the man that you need to become. She allows you to be the stagnant dude in the same jeans for days. You know what I'm saying? Be cutting up. I'm you just talk about me. All right, let me come back on screen, child. So, you know, th this is what we have on social media. And some people are saying that the girl's trolling. You know, I don't know. But let's not act like we haven't ran across people who really talk like that. They feel like, you know, um, you know, if they're dating, there's courting, you should be paying for everything. And I do feel like, you know, when you're going out on a date with um, a guy, especially for the first time, I do feel like he should pay. If he wants to take you out on a date, that's just how it's always been. The problem is now you have women on a first date, you want to go to the most expensive restaurant in town. Well, that's not really what people are trying to do. Um, I want to work my way up to that. If I'm just me, I don't even know your last name. Why are we eating at Fogo de Chao? That is where people go, you know, anniversaries, birthdays, at least with somebody that I know their first and last name. So it's like we have these weird expectations and a lot of times it's like, you know, some of the women who are demanding this particular type of treatment, can you even afford to take yourself out to eat? And that's the thing. If you can't even afford to take yourself out to nice restaurants, you can't then just put that onus on somebody that you're just meeting for the first time. So I think that a lot of these relationship <laughs> gurus and these podcasts have totally ruined the mentality. I think once you are in a relationship, again, you have to do what works for you, but it, it really just depends. For some people, you know, I'm a man. I'm going to make sure the majority of the bills are paid, the, the house note, the car note, things like that. And then they'll have it where their woman is just paying for the groceries, you know what I'm saying, cleaning, doing laundry, stuff like that. But everything in a relationship is give and take, right? So even if you are living like a blessed, soft life where you don't have to really pay for anything all your expenses are paid for, the, the mortgage, the house, and things like that. No man is going to let you just sit around and just live a soft life where they're just, you know, spending money on you, you know, buying you $4,000 Chanel bags and Dior shoes. Something is expected of that. And I think that's where people are not having an honest conversation where they're making it seem like, oh, I just live a soft life and nothing else. No, the person who's providing you that soft life, there has to be give and take. If I'm funding your lifestyle and I'm making sure the house is paid, the mortgage is paid, you damn right my dinner better be on the table by the time I get off work and I've worked a full, you know what I'm saying, 
eight, 10 hour day to make sure that we can afford this home. Dinner better be ready by seven. My kids better be, you know, clean, homework done, kitchen clean. It is give and take. Nobody's going to keep spending money and then there's nothing else in it for them. And I think that's where people are not being honest. You know what I'm saying? And if you are in that type of relationship and you really appreciate that person, you're going to want to do that. Because you feel secure in that relationship. This person's taking care of you financially. So why would you not suck their peen every damn night as soon as they walk in the door? And I'm just... <laughs> Let me stop. I'm just playing. But you know what I mean? Like, you're going to want to because you're able to rest in your femininity. Right? You feel protected financially. Why would you not want to do that? And so now this is why I got to hold my good sis accountable. Okay? Cardi and I love you. But you was the same one in WAP. Remember the WAP song, I don't cook, I don't clean, but I'll tell you how I got that ring. So you yourself are setting unrealistic expectations for these young girls where they think they can live a soft life, live in a mansion, everything's paid for and they ain't got to cook and clean. Bitch, in what world? I mean, you could have a maid, but then if that's the case, your man can fuck the maid. You got to bring something to the table as a woman when you're dealing with somebody who is successful, who has themselves together. Nobody wants to be with a beautiful bum, okay? It might be fun at first, you know, wild, fun, sex, freaky shit, but after a while, that gets old. Some You're going to want to have somebody that brings something to the table, that elevates you, that makes you, you know, better. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to eventually elevate together. And, and the same for young girls. You know, when you're young as women, we make mistakes. We get, you know, with the wrong guys and things like that. But eventually, you want somebody who brings something to the table. Nobody wants to take care of some single mother's son. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I, I think like the expectations just don't make sense. And again, regardless if you're a man or, or a woman, you have to think to yourself, you can't expect more out of somebody than, you, than you're willing to bring to the table. You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to do for yourself because in the event that person leaves you or quote unquote trades you in for something younger, then what? Don't just sit around and live a soft life. You better make sure you get some soft education, a soft hustle in the event that relationship changes. You know, because again, when you're dealing with men who got money and men who have means, they also have options. So don't ever get comfortable, you know? And I just think we have to have real conversations. I think you know, this red pill mentality where, you know, I mean, I've seen like the most dustiest men online say that because they're a man, they're the, they're the chase. You know, people are chasing them and, you know, they have their options of all these women. So your body's not even on point. You don't even go to the gym. Nobody's chasing you in droves like that. You're just talking to be talking on TikTok. Your hairline is messed up. Your fade is whack. Like, what are you talking? Nobody's chasing you down in droves. But again, you've had like this whole red pill community that have gassed up these guys to think that they're more valuable than what they really are. Just like you have the Bitter Betty Brigade that have gassed up these girls like Mustachiana to think that they're more valuable than what they are. You got to kind of self-assess. You got to take an honest look at yourself in the mirror and understand what you bring to the table and what you don't bring to the table. And I think that's the problem is that people are not honest. You have people who are, you know, kind of down here, no shade, but they want the folks up here. But then the folks who are up here who are kind of, you know, aligned together and on the same level, you know what I'm saying? They're looking at the folks up here. And it's like, again, we're trying to be with people who we're equally yoked with. And there's nothing wrong with trying to elevate and shoot for that. But if you don't bring anything to the table, why, why do you think that a woman who worked hard, has a good job, degrees, you know what I'm saying? Why do you think that she should be overlooked compared to a woman who didn't do that? Like, like everybody's fighting for the same thing, right? They want the baller. They want to be taken care of, all that stuff. And so it's like you have women who haven't gotten themselves together yet, and they're shooting for the same thing. So I just think like people need to like really understand where they stand in the grand scheme of things. Again, you got to do what works for your relationship. If you know that you have a hardworking man and he's doing what he needs to do, he's providing, you know, because so many times online, everybody keeps talking about the financial, you know, oh, my man takes me on trips, my man does this and that, and that's great. But it's not always about the money, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, I know we would hear the word a lot, high value man, high value man. And everything with high value man that's attached to that is monetary. Well, what about integrity? What about, you know, how does he make you feel spiritually? Is there a real connection? Because there's a lot of things that are high value that money is not attached to that. You know, so I, you, you can't take none of it to the grave with you. But outside of money, what does that person do? Do they elevate you? Do they bring something good out of you? You know, so I think that's what people really need to look at. And also, let's not forget, realistically, in today's economy, unless you're dating the 1%, the average person, right, outside of this social media bubble, outside of this influencer bubble, the average people who are watching my stream right now, y'all don't live that 1% lifestyle. Let's keep that real. Y'all need two incomes to survive in this day and age. Rent is super high. Mortgage interest is high. Car loan interests are high. So most people cannot survive right now on just one income. It'd be nice, but most people cannot. That doesn't make you less of a woman because you're willing to go half on the rent with your man. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make you less of a man because you need help. You guys have to elevate together and take care of your household. Why put all of that strain on one person and then what? Y'all gonna get kicked out the, the damn house because y'all can't afford it because it's all on him? So again, everybody has to do some assessment of their relationship and really understand what works for them and stop trying to live vicariously through these celebrities and through these influences online. Because again, everything that glitters is not gold. So that's why I always, I don't envy anybody's relationship because you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. You don't know what type of stuff they're having to do and how they're having to sell their souls to maintain that lifestyle. Remember, everybody thought Cassie had a maid. She's beautiful, you know, she's dating an older man, Diddy. She doesn't have to pay for anything. Oh, every time we seen Cass uh, Cassie, she was Chanel down, Dior down, nails done, hair done, everything did. And we find out she was a whole drug addict because that man had her so high on pills and was pimping her out and was beating her. Look at Kim Porter, rest in peace. She thought the grass was green on the other side running, you know what I'm saying, to go get with Diddy because remember her and Misha was friends. So she got with Diddy behind Misha's back, but y'all's not ready for that conversation, Misa. Excuse me. So she got with Diddy thinking it was sweet and she ended up getting the same man that Misa had, a violent narcissistic demon. So that's why I don't envy folks. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got to understand, maybe your man is not part of that 1%. But as long as he's trying and he's making your household what it is, a real household with love and, you know, he's there and he's a good father and a good provider, that's really what matters. But on the flip side, don't take care of anybody either. That's where women, you know, we have to be smart. It's not your job to build a bear. Okay, don't be Barbara the Builder. People have to come to the table with something. And again, also the age thing. We have to talk about the age thing. And I said this with the whole Ebony Williams situation when people were knocking her. I said a lot of y'all in y'all's 20s and early 30s want to knock her. Ebony's not in y'all's age bracket. So y'all are comparing your situation to a woman who is 40 plus and a millionaire. She has every right to say I'm not dating a bus driver. That woman is established and she has herself together and she's in a different age. She's in a different space in her life. When you are in your 20s, you guys can help build each other up and you know what I'm saying, uh, try and figure out where y'all want to be five, 10 years from now. When you're in your 40s, you don't got no, you know, 10, 15 years to waste. So depending on the age you're at, no, you have to come to the table with something. At my big age, I'm not impressed by somebody having a car. Oh, I have a car. So the fuck what? I've had a car since I was 18. And what else do you have at your big age? So again, the conversations are going to be different depending on where you're at in the age spectrum. Now, if you're 21 and you're trying to court another 20-something-year-old, you having your own car and being financially responsible at 21, that is amazing. That's good. But if you don't have a, a brand new car at 21, it's also okay. But I'm not going to pat a 40-year-old man on the back because he has a car. 
<laughs> and <laughs> do you own a house? What that credit look like? So there's just certain things. So, so we got to also remember that. That's why I tell young people all the time, stop comparing yourself to people who are 20 plus years older than y'all. And influencers. The average 21, 22, 23 year old, they don't have it like Kai Sinat, Aiden Ross. And the rest of these other I Show Speed Stop, whatever the hell I Show Speed's name is, I was butchered his name. They don't have it like that. That is an anomaly. But y'all will compare yourselves to them. Like, oh, well, uh, Kai Sinet is rich. I'm trying to pull me a Kai Sinet. You're not going to pull that at 21 because the average 21 to 22, 23 year old, they don't have it like that. So if you're a 21 year old female, you and that 22, 23 year old, y'all are gonna have to build each other up. That is not the norm. So people have to remember that. Just in the same breath, if you're in your late 30s, early 40s, we're not gonna be impressed by you having a car or a studio apartment. That's not impressive. Do you own your own home? Is your credit good? Do you run your own business? What all do you do? So those conversations are going to be different. That's why I tell girls, stop comparing yourself to these women on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. These women are in their 50s. They didn't have, if you, if you could go back in a time machine, you think NeNe had everything that she has now or Portia or Candy when they were in their 20s, when they were your age? Absolutely not. Where I'm at now at my age, I didn't have this shit when I was in my 20s. I worked hard for it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting in my beautiful home. But that, that took years. So you can't compare yourself to people who had a 20-year head start. So you got to know where you lie in the grand scheme of things. And I think that's where people have to be really, really honest. You know, and we have to stop shaming people, you know, what they do in their relationships and whatever works for them. Because at the end of the day, you can't date everybody. You don't control people's relationships. I know it sounds good on social media to rant and rave, like I said in my last stream. Y'all can pick it all you want in my comment section. But I don't care if somebody is dating an 18-year-old and they're in their 30s or 40s. I don't care. It's not against the law. That is their business. That is between those two. That is between their families. Is it ideal? Does it make me give certain people the side eye? Yes. But I'm not going to get bent out of shape over something that is not illegal. So I think that's the problem. Everybody's so worried about everybody else's relationships instead of focusing on their own and seeing how they can make it better and how they can elevate. They're doing too much comparing of other people's situations instead of putting that energy into their own. So that's the thing I, I disagree with Cardi about. If you're going to say it and that's how you feel, stand on that shit. Fuck these people. They're always going to be mad at something. At the end of the day, you shouldn't have to explain yourself what works for you is what works for you. But also understand to not envy somebody else's situation because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So like I said, while they're bragging about a soft life, they might have some hard lumps. So you just don't know. Let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. How many people got up in here? Okay, I see everybody come on. Okay, come on in, y'all. We got quite a few people. We got over 5,000 people in here. Um, let me see here. Uh, Chanel F sent $10. Says, hey, I'm a fellow Leo. I love what you do. Quiet tea sipper that was on Patreon but was booted. And I've been paying too. I got receipts. You need to send me an email. I keep saying this every stream. Um, we cleaned up house in the Discord. Everybody who was read, we sent out notices literally for a full 72 hours. And then the bots removed everybody who was read. So if you were removed, send an email to lovelyt2002 at Yahoo with your receipts. And then we will get you back in the Discord. So send us an email. Yeah, it's closed for new people. These are for people who are already in there. So if you're new, do not send an email. Thank you, AG. <laughs> um, let's see here. Chloe B says, love you, T. I love you too, sis. Appreciate you. Uh, Jada Lips set 1999 says, hey, auntie, this is my first super chat and I'm at work tuning in, sharing some of this good old tax money. Love you, T. Love you, too. And thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Sarah sent $20 says, hey, T. Love you, girl. Long time tea sipper. I can't wait to attend one of your events. Keep up the good work. I am Madam Alex on Discord. Okay. 
Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming through. Um, Holly J says, have you seen Aubrey O'Day on Baddies? No, I have not watched the new season of Baddies. I think it's Caribbean or something like that. I have not seen it. So I'm not really sure why she's on Baddies, but I'm sure I will find out soon enough. Uh, Jose sent 499 says the documentary about Nickelodeon was just the beginning of their downfall. Also love you T. I love you too. Like I told you guys last year, I said 2024, we're going to be in the age of Aquarius and this is the year of exposure and we are seeing that. You know, it started a few years ago with the music, with the movie industry, excuse me. Now we're seeing it with the music industry and we're seeing it with also the children's industry. But I've been talking about all this for years, but we're, we're, we're going to hit on that near the end of the stream just because I don't want them to mess with my stream. So we're going to talk about the Nickelodeon thing near the end. So thank you for the super chat. Uh, Shy B sent $50, says, hey T, hey Shy, thank you so much for the super chat, appreciate you, love. Uh, Andy Hot Fries sent $10, says, married couples are different from baby mama, baby daddies. Yeah, that is very true, but at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, people shack up all the time, play house, you know, have children out of wedlock. So I think the same thing can apply. You know, when you're living with somebody, you need to have, you know what I'm saying, whatever groundwork that y'all want to lay out to pay y'all's bills, you have to have that in stone. Both parties need to be aware of it, regardless of their marital status. So um, I, I think it can work for both. Let's see here. Sade A sent 20 says, T, I had a question about the Diddy deep dive. I was curious to know if there will be any information about the shit rituals. I have been wanting to research more about it since your Jonathan Odie video. Um, I can hit on that. Oh my gosh. I got it. I'm going I'm to get on the, port, the part four of my Diddy Deep Dive. I haven't jumped into that yet. I'm still taking notes. But there's also a funny connection with Diddy and Nickelodeon. And I'm going to leave it at that. But yeah, it is a very... I'll hit, I'll hit on that. I'll hit on some of the rituals in part four. Because I think part four is definitely going to get into like the esoteric stuff. Into like the more spiritual stuff. Even like with Biggie's, you know, uh, 666 clothing line. Um, I'm digging into that. I had to kind of take a break because that kind of got deep. But I think um, part four will we'll dig more into like the esoterical and the dark stuff. But um Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. And I'm glad y'all are liking the deep dives. I'm really appreciative of all the feedback on my Diddy deep dives. There's three episodes that are out. So if you want to see them, they're on Patreon, Discord, and on the YouTube membership. So thank you. Um, let's see here. Andrea says, if your name is on the bill, make sure it's paid. The bank slash government don't give a F. <laughs> I agree. Uh, let's see here. Summer Williams sent 499 says you should try this club if you ever go back to Austin again. Corral Nightclub. Okay. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. Uh, Summer sent 99 said, who do you think is going to win this year's elections? Trump or Biden? Just curious. Who do you think is going to win? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I don't, I just, at this point, I just don't, I don't care about either party. Um, the fact that those are our only two choices just says a lot. I, I'm more upset with the fact that maybe I need to just shut the fuck up. Um, no, I'm gonna talk about it. I don't care. Um, let me see here. I'm more upset that they keep thinking they can get with rappers, um, as opposed to real people who know about politics. I'm confused as to why Kamala Harris, who is the vice president that I, I barely ever see her. Maybe y'all see her more than I do. Um, why, when she does come out to speak to the people, she has Fat Joe with her? Who who gives a fuck what Fat Joe has to say about anything? He's not a politician. Like I I don't like I, I'm just confused. Like why when that's that's my issue with the Democratic Party. Um, even wasn't Fat Joe the one not even too long ago bragging about buying a Trump shoe? And then you have him at the White House and you're talking to him about drug reform, even though 
you yourself locked up thousands of men in California, okay, on drugs. So I, I guess that's the part that even like Joe Biden and Glow, and I love that song, yeah, Glow, like that's my jam. Why is Joe Biden with Glorilla? And she's like, yeah, Joe. And he's like, no, no, it's not. Yeah, Joe, it's, it's your name. He just sounds old and senile. And then they're saying Trump is wearing a diaper and he stinks. I, I, so at this point, I, I just, I have no dog in this fight. I'm over it. I'm over it. I, I just, I don't, I don't like it. I just don't like when, when they want the black vote instead of them having black people who are serious, who understand politics. And this is not a jealousy thing because I don't speak on politics. I, I, that's not my forte. So it's not like, oh, T just wants to go to the White House. The fuck if I do. Um, I just don't like that when it's election season, here comes the, you know, hot sauce in my bag, swag. And you know what I mean? I, I, I don't like, what is this? If you want to talk about drug reform and not penalizing people for marijuana, Please talk to people who've really been in this fight from day one. I don't want to hear anything that Fat Joe has to say. He's a gossiping hen on YouTube. He doesn't even make music anymore. Okay? Like, have enough respect for black people to understand that we read, we're into politics, we understand what's going on around, you know, in the world around us, and you don't have to attach everything to hip-hop. You don't have to attach everything to washed-up celebrities. We don't care. So that that's the part. You know what I'm saying? It, it's embarrassing. So let me be quiet now. And get off my rant. But thank you for the super chat. <laughs> yeah, it's just pandering. I'm over it. I'm I'm over the pandering. It's like we're 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 smart. We're a smart group of people. I don't need, you know, Jay-Z, you know, I got Obama on the text. So, so what? You're good. You're part of the 1%. We want you to talk to real people who are going to be affected by the laws and the things that you guys are enacting and not enacting. So that's the part that's just a mess. Yeah, they said Trump be out here on some, you know, he's, he just wears the pens and be just boo-booing on himself. I don't know. I, I went down this rabbit hole because at first I thought it was a lie from the pits of hell. But child, they said he'd be wearing a diaper. So I, I don't know. Some man sent out a tweet and it just like people started piecing stuff together and then it was on my feed and I'm like, oh, wow. So these are our choices. <laughs> one who walks around in a boo-boo diaper and the other one who just needs to, at this point, go into a home. He doesn't know if he's coming or going. So, so I don't know. I don't know, child. It's going to be interesting. Uh, let's see here. Brandon M sent $20 says, definitely agree. Social media is making some people delusional about relationships and expectations. Candace Owens had a conversation with some girls who got their income through OnlyFans. Would love to hear your opinion on that. Um, yeah, I've seen, I think I saw snippets of the OnlyFan girls. Um, I think, was it Candace Owens? I want to say Andrew Tate. Might be wrong. And yeah, that's another thing is the OnlyFans thing as well. And again... I don't give my opinion to not people, right? Because as long as you're grown and you're consenting, do you. But the problem that a lot of these girls don't understand is that with the OnlyFans thing, there's this glamorization of sex work on social media. And I remember me and Emily, we did a podcast on this about three years ago. It's a glamorization, right, of OnlyFans culture, stripper culture, you know, it's in the music, it's in the, the movies, it's in all of that, right? So you have a lot of these young girls who think it's just, that's just what it is now. And so you have women and young girls, they run, they create an OnlyFans. And really OnlyFans really works if you already have some type of, right, following on, in an, on social media already. So like, for instance, let me take myself for an example. If I was to say, hey, I'm going to start an OnlyFans and start reading, to, reading poems to y'all topless, you know what I'm saying? There's going to be a segment of my tea sippers, probably all y'all, child, who would join, right? Because I already have a, a built-in fan base. But if I am T, just some random girl that nobody knows, and you're starting from scratch, it's a lot harder. You're going to get people who come and see you, right? Because you're the new girl on OnlyFans. 
So they'll come and see you. They'll look at your, you know, your bikini pics and stuff like that. But eventually you have to do more and more for them to keep coming back and justifying paying you money. And that's when you have girls doing all types of strange shit for some change. And I think a lot of these girls are very delusional. Um, and I hate how the people try to make it, I guess, I don't even like the term like sex work. Can we just call it what it is? Like, I, I don't understand like a lot of these politically correct terms to not hurt feelings. It's prostitution. That you're, you're trading something sexual for something else. And I don't care if it's just you, you know, playing with yourself on OnlyFans or actually physically selling cooch. Because a lot of them do that as well. Um, it's prostitution. I don't think that's a bad word. It's in the Bible. It's just what it is. You know, everything is so, you know, everybody just commodifies everything. And again, this is not to knock people because you do what you got to do. You know, bills are high. There's a lot of shit. Gas is expensive, right? But stop trying to make it seem like there's no downside. I think that's the part that bothers me is that once again, people only show you the highlight reel of their life. They only show you the good. They only show you, you know, the money that's being made, the purses that are being bought, the shoes, the hair. They only show you the, you know, the, the um, trips to Dubai, but they don't show you that other side. And anybody who has really worked in sex work, who has been a stripper, you know, I have a lot of friends who were strippers. Hell, Emily was a stripper. Um, friends who, you know, sold the cat. There is a dark side to all of that. You know what I'm saying? And as women, we can act like we can just turn it off and it's not a big deal. But as you get older and you look back on that stuff, it does really haunt you. You know, and that's why they like trying to get girls really young, like, you know, 18, 19 years old, because they can be manipulated and molded into thinking like, this is just the norm, this is cool. And then you come back 10, 15 years later and you see those same girls and they're washed. They look older than they are. And then you have these sick men, these red pill men who are engaging in this fuck shit with these young girls who will then turn around and tell them that you've been ran through. But these were the same losers who ran through these same girls that they will now turn around and shame five, six, eight, ten years from now. So this is what a lot of these young girls need to understand, you know, and especially if you're black. We don't, we don't get a redo as black women. Let me keep that all the way real with y'all. And I've said this before and I was told I was, you know, being a pick me or some bullshit. We don't get that same grace that white and Latino women do. They can be whores, they can slut themselves out on OnlyFans, they can do hardcore porn, they can shove Coke bottles up their ass. And then at 30, be like, I'm reformed, I'm no longer in sex work, you know, and they can revamp themselves. They can write books and be seen as worthy. But our girls, when they get into sex work young, and they decide to get out of it and they want to do something better with their lives, they always have a scarlet letter on them. They're always seen as hoes and not worthy. You can't turn a hoe into a housewife. White girls and Latino girls, they never get that stigma. They can be ran through, through the industry, and they can still find somebody to wife them up. They can still find somebody who will be willing to be with them. Hell, that, that funny looking broad, what's her name? The one that killed her mama? Look how famous she is and she done killed somebody. She got a whole husband. That's what I'm saying. Like they can always revamp. They can always get second chances. So that's why I'm always going to keep it real with young black girls. Because I know it seems cool right now and it's a bag to be had. But understand you're setting yourself up for your future. I have friends who were in the game when we were young. And now they're in their late 30s, early 40s, and people still treat them like, oh, she, she's just a hoe. I remember her back in the day when she was doing this, this, and that. Meanwhile, the white girls who were doing the same thing, they're all remarried and they're Republicans now. So, you know, it's it's really sad. It's really sad. It's, it is. So, again, you know, do what you want to do, but just understand that there are consequences for everything that's done. 
you know, and while it sounds like it's not a big deal and, you know, you got to have tough skin, nobody wants to be just disregarded. And another thing they don't talk about is that if you guys don't know, a lot of porn stars have been offing themselves as of late, young, under the age of 30. There's been a lot of articles out, beautiful young men and women, and they're offing themselves. So it, it's a lot that comes with that. You know, people try and make it seem like it's just no big deal and, um, you know, you just do what you got to do for the money. But it is a big deal, especially when it starts with OnlyFans. And once those views start going down and you're not getting as many views and the money's not money in, then it goes from that to then you're meeting with your clients. You're sleeping with your clients. This industry is crazy. Like, like, ask yourself, if these people are doing big things, they're doing it big. I was on Twitter the other day, and there was a video of Natalie Nunn. I guess people were uploading her OnlyFans content. I didn't even realize she had an OnlyFans. She was in the shower jerking off. And I'm just like, well, if you're making this much money on baddies, why do you have to do all that? It's, it's weird to me. So are you trying to normalize this so young girls would be like, oh, well, let me do what she's doing? It, it, it's strange. I'm not the richest person out there by far, but I don't feel like if it ever got that bad, I would have to be on OnlyFans jerking off for a check. It, it's, it's very weird to me. It's almost like I, I get the money aspect of it, but I also feel like a lot of these girls in the industry they're doing it not so much for the money, but to recruit girls. And that's where you have to be very, very careful. Because if somebody's living the high life, why would they have to degrade themselves like that? If they have it like that. Most people who have it like that, they don't have to go that route. So I feel like a lot of it is recruitment. Well, let me mind my business. Okay, y'all done turned this stream into <laughs> this is my other shit. How long have I been on here? I've been on here for an hour. Ciao. Okay. I'm just keeping it real. But um, thank you for the super chat, Brandon. I appreciate you. Let's see here. Janice at 999 says, no perfect formula for a relationship. I'm 23 with a good job. I can pull my own weight. I'm looking for a man with more old-fashioned values, but it's hard. I will continue to wait for my blessings. Yes. It is hard. And I be like, um, especially with like a lot of my young tea sippers. That's why I like doing my little meet and grease child. So y'all can meet other like-minded people. Cause it is, it's, it's very hard. And I hate when I see like young girls who really have themselves together and you know, they just want to find the right person. And same thing for like young men, you know, every young man out here is not looking for an only fans model, IG model, you know, they just want a, a regular young girl that they can build with and, and do something with and you know create a legacy and i just pray that you guys eventually find each other you know but don't settle definitely don't settle you know if i can say that to anybody like don't, don't settle know what you want and it eventually will come and and also expand your horizons you know so many times people feel like the person for them is going to be you know their same age or their same race and that's not always it you know maybe your prince charming is you know some 26 year old Mexican man, you know, who knows? You just, you just never know. So definitely open your dating horizons. Uh, let's see here. MB says, what happened to our women who used to sing all about independent women? Throw your hands up at me. Independent by Neo. She got her own. Jamie Foxx, independent by Webby. I miss you. Well, that's the problem is that too many people were screaming about independent. I don't need no man. And it turned off a lot of men. It created this whole very masculine era from, from women, especially black women. It's like, I don't need no man. I can do everything myself. No, no, bitch, I do want a man. I don't need one, but I would like one. You know what I'm saying? And I think it went from one extreme to another. And there's nothing wrong with having a man. There's nothing wrong with saying that I'm a woman and I can't handle everything. I have the right to cry and break down. I don't want to be a strong black woman. You know what I'm saying? And I think that narrative was, putting on, was put on black women and it's so unfair. 
because it's like we're not allowed to show vulnerability and sensitivity. And that is so wrong because every other race of woman can do that. They're allowed to be vulnerable and cry. You know what I'm saying? But if we cry and we get upset, it, it's like, oh, it's not taken as serious. It's dismissed. It's made fun of. So I think a lot of those songs really work people's mentalities where it almost was like, oh, well, black women are, you know, you're a strong independent black woman, so you don't need no man, and I don't need to step up, and you can pay all the bills. Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I don't agree with the whole independent thing either. I don't think anybody needs anybody, but I think it's good to have companionship and have help. You know, nobody wants to do everything just alone by themselves, if they can help it. There needs to be balance. I think balance is the most important key in relationships. Um, Shanasia said, 999 says, me and my boyfriend, she said, my boyfriend and I go 50-50. We are a team. We have mutualism goals. I survived ED before I met him. Why would he pay for my lifestyle? People need to live within their means. Thank you so much for the super chat. And I definitely agree. You have a lot of people with champagne taste and beer pockets. They can't even afford to do it for themselves, but yet they want somebody else to take their money and do it for them. And that's just really not how it works. Now, if you just want a transactional relationship and you know what, you know, you're cool with, you know, fucking for bags and that's just what it is, then that's your business. But that's not going to work in a real relationship if you really want a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, that's just not how a relationship works. It's not gonna be one-sided where it's just all about you. And same for men. You know, you have some men, they just want it to be, they want arm candy, they want cooch whenever they can get it. You know, they want you to do this, this, and that for them. And that's cute, but even that doesn't last long either. Cause eventually that person's gonna get bored and tired of being treated like a slave and a doormat. So there has to be balance. Let me see here. Uh, Ransom Place Entertainment sent 999 says, Hey T, love your content. What do you think about the TikTok situation? Will it have an effect on China? Um, I talked about it a bit last week. Oh yeah, let me clean this up because I, I guess for some reason people thought I was like defending China and that's not what it was. What I'm saying is this, right? I feel like there's an arrogance with the US to tell China, sell TikTok or else. If for me, if it's really about security, right? Cause that's what they're saying. That the Chinese are hacking into our stuff. Um, they have all this data on American citizens. Then ban the app outright. There should be no negotiation. If it's really about protecting the American people, ban TikTok. They ban shit all the time. When you're in China, you can only access American apps and websites via a VPN. They don't make any apologies for it. So that, that was my issue. I don't know if it came across right. You know, the Wi-Fi was fucked up too. So, But that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't have the right to, um, to ban it. We have every right to ban it if we deem it unsafe. We don't have the right to tell them to sell it to us. That's where, to me, it's not really so much about security. That's where to me, you're mad that China's getting a bag off of Americans and you want a piece of that pie. That's all I'm saying. Because imagine if China said, uh, we don't trust Facebook. We don't trust Instagram. In order for y'all to use these apps in our country, you need to sell it to a Chinese company. Nobody, that would not fly with anybody. Everybody would be like, oh, fuck no, fuck the CCP. We're not doing that. So that's all I'm saying. If it's really about data breach and protecting us as American citizens or whatever, then just ban the app, just ban the app. Get rid of the app. But is it really about that? That's all I'm saying. But like I don't like it's just all this mush mouth talk. Seller else. No, there, there's no seller else. If they're a danger, get rid of it. They do it all the time. I, I just, I never understand like this whole pussyfooting that the West does with China. They can do what they want to do to everybody else. But then the second they, you, you, you pull a you on them, they're crying. Why? Child, I'm going off today. 
It feels good to be home. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why negotiate? Fucking negotiate. We don't got, you don't have to explain that to them. Who are they? They, they never negotiate with us. They're absent. Timu's making so much damn money. Shin. They don't have to pay all types of tariffs. They don't have to pay all types of shipping fees that American companies have to pay. If you order right now from Express or H&M here in America, they got to pay all types of taxes and tariffs and everything else. But if you order from Timu, okay, or Shein, they don't have to pay nothing. We give them way too much leeway. It's always, I, I don't know, it's just weird to me. I just don't get it. So no, I, that's what I was trying to say in my stream. Maybe it didn't come off right, but that's really what I'm meaning. Like, why explain anything? Why beg them to sell to us? Just ban it outright. That's why I feel like there's more to it, and it's more about the money. Because right now, child, America's struggling. Um, Bree sent 1999 says, I just got off work. I had to run to your live. Hey, girl, it's lovely to see you. Hey, Bree. Thanks for checking in, sis. Okay, so let me go ahead and get on the next topic here. I can blubber been on for an hour. It's 5.14. Okay, well, this early. We got over 7,000 people in here. Shout out to y'all. So let's talk about this whole Kanye West, Kai Sinat situation. Give me just a second. So Kanye's been out here, child. He beefing with everybody. He beefing with Kai Sinat. He's beefing with the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, a lot of these old heads, I'm seeing that they're definitely feeling a way about these little young boys. Um... Kai, I'm not a fan of Aiden Ross. I just, I don't, there's something creepy about him. I'm just not a fan. Um, he gets away with a lot of shit. But I like Kai. And I love the fact that he went to Africa recently. He was in Nigeria. He was in Ghana. You know, just really looking out for the people, showing love. And, you know, bringing his huge audience to see the other side. You know what I'm saying? To see Africa and to see another side. I just thought that was awesome. So Kanye West has been on his vulture shit. You know, he got the music out and everything. So he's out here sending out free clothes to Kai. And everybody knows that Kai Sinek, he's really tiny. He's probably like, he looks like he's about five foot. Real small young man. And so Kanye done sent him some, you know, triple X sweatpants. And they didn't fit. And, you know, Kai was doing what Kai does on his stream and Kanye basically flipped out. So we're going to watch this video here. Let me go ahead and share my uh, screen real quick here. Okay, so we're going to watch Kai. Wait, are these the shit the nigga be walking around in, nigga? Do he be walking around in these bitches? Oh my fucking gosh. Wait, you supposed to put them over the socks? No, nigga. Nigga, no, you don't have to. So goofy. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, let me play this. Wait. Part. Why you ain't saying nothing? 
something about what Adidas is doing? When Vulture Soul came out, you ain't play my verse? You controlled. Don't play with me. What the fuck did I do? Okay, he's so funny. Imagine being like, I think he's like 22, like, oh my gosh, that he has like such an awesome life to be that young. So I want to read to y'all what Kanye said. He jumped in this young man's DM. Now Kanye is definitely old enough to be his daddy because I'm old enough to be this little boy mama, okay? So he jumped up in his DM. He says this. He says, don't make no jokes about my clothes when you ain't saying nothing about what Adidas is doing. When Vulture's song came out, you ain't play my verse. You control, don't fuck with me. So Kai um, posted this and said, you know, why he say fuck me for? <laughs> so he says, um, I hear you bro, but ain't no jokes was being said when I first opened up that package, I showed love instantly. And he did, he put on them long ass tube sock shoes, okay? And was dancing and jumping and all that stuff. Then he says, all I did was try on the sweats and they didn't fit, no jokes made. I immediately asked for a new pair. Kanye says, so you ain't do nothing wrong? So I ain't felt this way for no reason? Kai says, yes. Then he says, fuck you nigga. You was told to diss my shit, you a pawn. Then he says, um, Kai, Kai replies back to Kanye. Kai is showing more maturity than Ye. He says, keep it family friendly, no cursing. The pants don't fit, Ye. You think someone told me, you think someone told me something? I'll prove you wrong. Ah, uh, fuck Adidas. Ah. Uh. So that is what Kai had to say about the situation. So yeah, Kanye is definitely in his feelings and I don't understand that. And I think what it is, is a lot of these new entertainers, they're seeing that these young dudes, these new gamers, they're the new way. They command an audience. You know, when they go live, there's literally like thousands, like 30, 40,000 people on their streams. And so they want a piece of that. The fact that Kanye was like, yeah, you didn't even play my verse and this and that. Like y'all don't control this young man's stream, okay? Because when he was on the come up and he was building his own brand and, and all that stuff, I don't recall Kanye, Joe Budden, any of these people sending this young boy a shout out, looking out for him. But now all of a sudden they want to demonize these dudes and that's because they know these young gamers and streamers hold a lot of weight. They hold a lot of power. And I'm glad that Kai put him on blast and didn't just eat that and allow him to think that he could just talk to him any type of way because it wasn't that serious. Like I said, it came out to me as disrespectful, delusional, and narcissistic. The fact that your company sent him something that didn't even fit. So how narcissistic is that, that you just sent him a PR package, one that he didn't ask for, and just sent a default size? Whereas if you guys really cared about the, pro the product and really cared about getting a real review, you would have slid in his DMs beforehand and said, hey, I would love to send you our latest, you know, design. What is your size? What's your address? That shows you how PR works. But the arrogance of them to think that they can just send him whatever and he should just be happy with it. They literally felt like he should have just, you know, uh, tied a piece of string around the sweatpants and been like, oh, these are the bomb. Y'all go out and go buy these. And he gave a real review. He put them on and they didn't fit. So how are you mad at him when y'all sent him that horrible PR? So I don't feel bad for Ye. So now on top of that, Ye is also having issues with Jesus. He's feeling away. So let me go ahead and pull, hold up here. He feels like God wasn't there for him when he was going through his foolishness with adidas am i do they um am i still live my screen went blank am i still live y'all i'm waiting to see if i'm still live okay because it turned black real quick 
probably Kanye. I'm just kidding. All right, hold on. Let me go ahead and um pull this up here. So he's doing an interview with Big Boy. So we're going to watch this real quick. At one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you. We hear, you know, Jesus is king. We hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not fuck it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen, but we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. Them prayers ain't working. We're going we have to apply actual physical building partnerships. Hands and, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did. This is what I did. Like, I mean, look at this. I know I'm not going to third rail your interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's scary. But what they do is they put us each in a silo and say your grandmother gonna lose her crib and this gonna you know how many threats we've been dealt dealt with and i didn't pray my way through them threats either i had to get up and do it myself i had so much to do i had time to pray mm -hmm. so that's where that's that's where my issue is and look at where i'm at today at one point yay Okay, so y'all just heard what Kanye had to say. Now, I, I get some of what he's saying, like, as far as, you know, he's upset. He felt basically like, like God just, you know, left him. But this is why I always say, like, I, I just, I hate when, like, celebs, like, play this whole God, Jesus role. Because it's interesting when everything was going good for him. You know, remember he was doing Sunday services. He had the little girl Northwest out there singing. They had the choir I felt like at this point he was just using God. It was just like another selling point, you know, um, because I remember even saying during the whole Donda album release thing, how is one minute, you know, everything is God, God, Jesus Christ, but then you're on stage with Marilyn Manson. Like you can't serve two masters. And I've always said that. And I get the point because we've all been there, right? Where we've gone through stuff and it's like, dang, you know, I'm a good person. I try and treat people how I want to be treated. You know, why do I keep going through things and you feel like your prayers aren't being answered? I think we've all been there. But God is also not like a, a genie. God is not somebody who's just going to do something because, well, I'm going to pray real quick and then everything's just going to happen for me. That's not how prayer works. But I do agree with the part where he says that you can't just pray. You do have to get up and do things yourself. You know, God will use other people. God will use you, you know what I'm saying, to help yourself. So I do like that he made that point. But he also needs to take responsibility for a lot of the stuff that he went through in the past two years, okay? He put himself in that situation. Regardless if you agree with what he said or not about the Jews and all that stuff, those were his words. And he, he stood on it 10 toes down. So sometimes if you're willing to be that martyr, then it is just what it is. You can't 
get mad at Jesus. You can't get mad at God. You can't get mad at anybody. You knew what it was when you chose to go against these people. It's no different than when Muhammad Ali, when he chose, when he said he wasn't going into the draft. He said, ain't no Viet Cong ever did nothing to me. I, if you're into boxing, old school boxing, y'all remember this. He refused. And he ended up, you know, getting in trouble behind that. They stripped him of his titles. He couldn't box. They tried to break that man simply because he was against the Vietnam War, okay? I've never heard Ali come back and be like, and I'm talking about a lot of people turned their back on him because they felt like he was not being a good American citizen, you know? And I've never heard him come back and say, hey, I lost everything. I had to start over. Allah is not real. God is not real. He left me at my lowest. So I think it's an easy cop-out. You know, if you're willing to be that martyr and, and you want to be a truth speaker, that's just what comes with being a truth speaker. If that's your truth and that's what, how you feel and you want to stand 10 toes in it, that's just what's going to come with it. And you got to know that your money is going to be affected. If you're not going to play the game, that's part of what happens. So if, if, you're not, if you're not strong enough to handle the heat that comes with telling the truth, then go be a sheep. It's that simple, but you can't blame God because it wasn't God who got you into that situation. So that's the part I, I don't agree with. You know, when people are going through stuff, you know, we all go through things, good or bad. But when you're going against the whole industry and especially the powers that be in that industry, you're going against real devils. So while you're saying that God didn't, you know, wasn't there or, you know, Jesus wasn't there and you were getting death threats. Who do you think protected you from those death threats? You're here. You're dropping music. And you're, you're, you're making moves on the billboard. You're here to see another day. So God protected you from something because those death threats could have definitely came to fruition and they didn't. So again, I think maybe part of it is you're serving two masters. And like God says, he's a jealous God. You can't serve two masters. Either you're going to walk this Christian walk and be in it wholeheartedly, or you're going to sit there and toe the lion, toe the lion and dance with devils. You can't be sitting here screaming, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but then you're running around with Marilyn Manson because of the check to be had. It don't work that way, in my personal opinion. That's just how I see it, to each his own. Follow who you want to follow, do who, who you, you know, hang with who you want to hang with. But I don't have not one Satanist friend, not judging Satanist, but we don't have anything in common. I don't go out my way to look for friends who are Satanist. You don't believe in God? I do. So like we have nothing in common and that's okay. Just like I don't expect the Satanist to be best friends with a Christian. That, that's an oxymoron. So I, I think Kanye put himself in the situation that he's in now, you know what I'm saying? And he's trying to find other people to blame. And, you know, it's easy to blame the, you know, the so-called sky daddy, right? Because then you're going to have a segment of your fans who are atheists or Satanists or whatever being like, see, God doesn't exist. So I think a lot of the stuff that Kanye, that has happened to him in the past few years, he needs to put the blame where it really goes. One, personal accountability. And two, the people in the industry who basically, you know, fucked up his money and did what they had to do to shut him up. So that's what happens sometimes, unfortunately. Hold on here. Let me see whatever, what other things. Okay. How long I've been on here? Okay, an hour and a half. Okay. I'm going to read some more super chats. I'm going to get on to the last topic here. Um, okay, Kirk Frank says, 50-50 isn't just paying the bills. It goes for chores, responsibilities, date night, ideas, etc. You both have to contribute equally in a relationship. Definitely agree with that. I think a lot of women or a lot of people online they just think that 50 50 is money but yeah it, it's definitely there there has to be give and take in any relationship you know you can't expect for somebody to do 100 percent of it something and then you just don't get to do anything i mean hell even children put into the household 
Like, yeah, you're my kid, but you're not just going to sit here and just sleep and eat. You got to do chores. You know what I'm saying? You can't pay no bills, but you're going to make sure this house is clean by the time I get off of work. So, yeah, I think in any relationship, there's a give and take. So I definitely agree with you with, on that. Um, Melissa Marie Love sent 499 says, hey, T, this is my first time making it to your live. Usually it's later. I love your work and your deep dives. You got me through work days in the office. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'm glad you were able to catch me live today. Um, Whoop, it's Nina says, practice self-love and care first. Otherwise, you'll break a good person's heart with your nonsense. I definitely agree. You have a lot of angry people online, you know, who have like been through a lot of stuff and then they bring their baggage into the next relationship and then they end up, you know, basically tainting that next person with their nonsense. So people do need to heal before they get into relationships. Um, Mickey sent 999 says, Kanye is beefing with his own cognitive dissidents. The fact that people keep trying to fool, the fact that people keep, keep, I'm sorry. The fact that people keep trying to keep this fool relevant is why on the path to society, the movie Idiocracy. Yeah, well, he's going to be relevant because he's Jay. I don't think Kanye is cancelable. He has, I mean, people love Jay. People love his music. He's talented. So people are going to do that. But I, I think that's part of it, too, is that he knows he messed up. Like, he almost, he took it too far. And it really affected his money. And now he's upset. That's why he's, you know, doing concerts at Rolling Loud where he's not using a microphone. He's literally, him and Ty Dolla Sign, sitting on stage and not performing. They're just letting the track play. It's just like his moves are really, really weird. And it's sad because it's almost like he's punishing his fans. Again, this was the same Christian man that was shaming his ex-wife for constantly, you know, dressing a certain way and being a bad role model for their daughter. But now his new wife, He's constantly dressing her up in like the most skimpiest shit. I'm always in this comment section calling him out on that. It's just like, come on, yay, what are you doing? So again, I think it's his own issues that he has with himself. So thank you for the super chat. Um, Let's go says, hey, auntie, love your deep dives. I went back to school to get my master's in IT because the job market is bad. Okay, well, good luck to you on that. I appreciate the fact that you love my deep dives. Um, IT is definitely a great field, so you going back to school for that is perfect. You'll definitely be able to find a job. Um, the top jobs right now in IT is definitely anything in security. They're definitely looking for people. So good luck with everything. Uh, Paula Dean Krausen 5 says his, him blaming his downfall on Jesus is just another way for him to avoid accountability. Nobody told him to talk reckless about the J community. Facts. Nobody did. So he does, he has to take accountability for that. You know, he kept pushing, you know, kept poking at the bear, poking at the bear. And eventually, you know, the bear swung back. So it is what it is. Uh, Melanin Queen, what's up, sis? She said 999 says, not Kanye having an issue with Jesus. He wants us to move when it comes to protesting for him. But ain't this the same man that says slavery was a choice? It's double talk. It's the double talking for me. Mm. Facts. All right. So let me go ahead. I want to talk about this last topic here before I get up out of here. So Nickelodeon has been trending in the past few days. Um, if you guys do not know, um, they dropped this new, well, not Nickelodeon dropped, but the ID channel dropped a new documentary called Quiet on the Set. I've been talking about it for a while that it was coming out um, back in 2022. I had did a deep dive on uh, Jeanette McGurdy when she dropped her book called I'm Glad My Mother Died. And we talked about uh, Dan Schneider in that video. It's still on YouTube. And a lot of people have covered Dan Schneider over the years. I know Sloan did like a really good breakdown on Dan Schneider as well. Um, he's the weirdo from head of the class that was obsessed with feet and a lot of this stuff, when I watched the documentary over the past two days, um, was new to me. I felt like I knew a lot about the Nickelodeon rabbit holes, but there was definitely a lot of new stuff in the documentary that I didn't know. By the time I Carly and all that stuff came out, I was, you know, too old for it. By then I was like a teen mom taking care of my kid, minding my business. 
But I was there as a kid when all that first came out. So the first like three seasons of all that. So I remember like the little girl, I can't think of her name, um, that was real popular before my Amanda Bynes and Keenan and Kel. Angelique Bates, I remember all of them. So that was my era. So I never realized that the whole iCarly thing was as sexualized until, you know, recently. But I was really disturbed by, by all of the kids and their treatment, but especially like the black children. It was something very nefarious. It was almost like a modern day minstrel show with the young black boys, the two of them that were on um, the show. Cause I never knew about the whole dare aspect of Nickelodeon. Like I said, by the time that came along, you know, I was probably busy breastfeeding. You know, like I don't even remember that chapter at all. Um, so that was, you know, at that point I wasn't watching Nickelodeon. You know, I'm watching Sesame Street, you know what I mean, with my baby. Um, so there's like a whole chapter of Nickelodeon that I missed. But um, I was really disturbed when they had a superhero called Mr. Big Nose with the little black boy. And when you look at his costume, he definitely looked like a like it looked like two penises on his shoulders with the two balls. And he had this huge no, he he just looked like a, a ugly ass troll character. It was just weird. Then they had him in the latex, you know, one piece suit and a little boy wearing spandex or latex, whatever they had him in. You know, it's it's showing his nether regions, you know? It was just very weird. He looked like a brown condom. And then there's a scene where he's like, ha-chu, and he blows all this clear snot material on the black woman's face. And it was literally a cum shot. And I'm watching this as an adult, like, what the, like, I never saw that ever. I never saw that episode. I never even heard of this, this whole little situation. And so that was really disturbing that grown adults watch this with adult eyes. And they were okay with it. It's just weird to me because it's like I'm watching it with adult eyes and I don't understand how this is kid-like, how it's funny. Then there was like little challenges, um, the sugar challenge. And I didn't know anything about this. Like I said, this was all new stuff to me that I was watching the doc. And so they're having to pour all this sugar in their mouth. Um, and then the little boy said that at some point the sugar congeals. I didn't even know sugar did that because again, I don't pour sugar in my mouth, right? So it would congeal. And as they're trying to talk, all this clear slime is running down their chin. And it looks like somebody nutted, sorry for being vulgar, orgasmed in their mouth. And they're trying to talk and all this clear shit is just dripping down their chin onto their chest. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? This was allowed on television? It looked like like orgasm juice. I'm like, these poor babies. These were babies. These were kids. It, it, was, it was really triggering to watch as... Oh, I'm trying not to cry. It was really triggering to watch. Because, oh... Oh, I didn't like it. I did not like it. It definitely ruined my childhood. So thank you. It was hard to watch. I didn't think I was going to get all emotional, but yeah, it was really triggering. And, um... Especially when the little black boy, when they fired him and he was mad at his mom and his mom was one of the few that would speak up and it was almost like they got punished because the mom was starting to see like the fuckery that was unfolding. And then when she said that that literally ruined their relationship as mother and son, you know, um, for a long time, like I just felt so bad because it's like she was trying to protect her child and she got punished for it. And then for years, you know, the son is upset, blaming his mom. And to see that these kids basically sacrificed their childhood so that we could have a childhood, right? So that we would have something to watch on Saturdays, watching SNCC. And 
Even now as an adult, when I go back and I watch shows like Ren and Stimpy, which was one of my favorite shows as a kid, like in fifth, sixth grade, and you watch these cartoons with adult eyes and it's just like, why was this in here? Like, why why are Ren and Stimpy on a, on a saw? And it looks like he's having anal sex with Ren. Like, why was this here? Like, it's, it's just very disturbing. And another thing that really disturbed me too was like the women, you know, the women writers and how they were just mistreated, how they weren't giving the same pay as men. But then I also have to, the one lady that stayed the whole time, because the one lady finally left and she sued. But the lady who stayed the whole time, it also made me kind of question her, like, I get it, you were also a victim in a way, but like, why did, why did nobody speak up for the children? Like, why did people just feel like this was okay? And I remember I was one of the first people on YouTube who did a video about Orlando Brown. And when I did my video, it came from a very fucking sincere place. And cause I was really concerned cause I had been following him for years and I thought he was funny, talented. I remembered him as, as a kid. And then he just started kind of going off the deep end. And I remember that bitch Vlad TV took everything off of my video that I created on Orlando Brown. Like what is going on with him? And he took my, he, they watched, his team watched my videos and then they took all the clips from my videos to question Orlando Brown and stuff like that. And then ever since then, he's just been exploited. And um, you think back to like all these kids and, and the sacrifice that they made. And it makes me think like what really happened on set to these children? Because if this is what they're showing on television, if this got greenlit as being okay what was really happening behind the scenes and there's a lot of things that people sometimes they don't talk about because they they kind of put it in the back of their mind they don't want to think about it it's just that traumatic but i'm glad that the truth is finally coming out because like i said it's been so many people on social media on youtube who have been talking about brian peck and dan schneider for years and we're finally it's almost like we're also low key getting our justice because for so long we were called conspiracy theorists and crazy and haters and jealous and told that we're everything but a child of God. And now all of this information is coming about coming out about the industry and the things that were happening to these kids. And again, this is not to demonize the whole Hollywood, right? Because there are people who are good people who work on set and who do try and look out, you know, for others and stuff like that. But unfortunately, absolute power corrupts. And what you have in Hollywood is a situation where people who may not have been popular, they're not cute, they don't have like the it factor, and they get into positions of power. Harvey Weinstein, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but he's not handsome whatsoever. He's not winning any beauty contest. So when you put somebody who looks like that, who's bad built, low self-esteem, and they get to be in a position of power, it goes to their head. And it's almost like I'm going to pay back everybody who ignored me, who didn't think I was going to be anything, who didn't find me attractive. Now I'm going to make these so-called beautiful women get down on their knees and I'm gonna get them in the most vulnerable positions and bring them down a notch. And I think that was the same thing, you know, with Dan and, and Brian Peck, is that you had these people who are in positions of power and it went to their head and they were all drunk on power. Mm -hmm. um, Brian Peck should have never ever been allowed to go back on Nickelodeon after his conviction. And to find out that everything that he did to that young man, it was just really disturbing. But one of the things that really disturbed me about Brian Peck is that when he would bring the kids and the families to his house, he had this weird obsession with John Wayne Gacy. He was even writing John Wayne Gacy while John Wayne Gacy was in prison. He was writing him. 
And so you got to ask yourself, you know, what was really going on that he felt? This is a man who's in charge of being around children like Drake Bell. What adult wants to attach themselves to a serial killer who killed 31 young men and buried them underneath his home? And the John Wayne Gacy, if you ever go down that rabbit hole, I remember I did the 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 Jeffrey Dahmer, if you guys never watched my, Def my Jeffrey Dahmer deep dive, a lot of these serial killers were, were MK assets. A lot of them, especially Jeffrey Dahmer, nobody can tell me otherwise. Um, so I, I find it very interesting, his ties to this serial killer. And even when I went down the rabbit hole with Jeffrey Dahmer, it was very interesting, a lot of the ties to him you know, from like Adam Walsh and, and John Walsh and just all the stuff that ends up being tied to these serial killers. It was just very, very disturbing. So we're gonna watch this quick snippet here. Uh, hold on, let me make sure this is muted. I'm, 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 uh, it's really disturbing, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to like break down crying, but that shit just be bothering me. Okay, we're gonna watch this real quick. This was a uh, snippet here. Brian's, Brian's house, house for a barbecue. For a barbecue. And his house was, and his little house was a little off. off. He had a room that was just dedicated to like vintage toys and comic books and he converted his garage into like a Planet of the Apes shrine. I noticed a painting in the room that stuck out to me because it had nothing to do with Planet of the Apes. It was of a birthday clown holding balloons. And Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around, and on the back it said, To Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. It was a self-portrait of serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. At this point, I'm like 14. I didn't know, like, the details, but I knew, like, this guy's serial killer who like killed a lot of young men and boys my instinct was like everyone has to see this and so like all the parents and the kids come into the room and then brian presents the painting again and brian actually developed a pen pal relationship with john he kept like this pile of letters and photos from okay i'm sorry i forgot to mute it i'm sorry i'm just getting too emotional um, but yeah, it, it's really, it's really disturbing. I'm sorry for the echo. I forgot to, to mute it, but it, it's just really, it's really disturbing. And it makes me feel like it, it's deeper than that. What made John Wayne Gacy of all people even want to write Brian Peck? And maybe I just look at stuff way too deep than I should or esoterically. Like, I, I, I don't know. It's just weird. That's just such a weird connection. And it's like, were you messing with these children as far as like some weird like initiation or sacrifice to John Wayne Gacy? It's just weird. And then it makes me feel like, have they really checked this man out? to see if he was not involved in possibly, you know, killing of anybody since this was his pen pal because he seemed very much protected even after he went to prison for molesting um Drake Bell and others, he got right back out and was on the show. They even talked about him in an open secret. And that's another rabbit hole, an open secret. So it's it's just like, I learned a lot from this documentary. I thought I knew like everything that went on with like Nickelodeon, but there was definitely a lot of stuff that I did not know that I learned. And I thought it was well put together. Um, but props to social media, props to 
influencers because this would not have been an, on national television if it was not for us influencers who were going back in time and saying, what is going on at Disney? What is going on with Orlando Brown? What is going on with Amanda Bynes? Who, you know, it, like people like Sloan and others who dug deep. This is really where mainstream television is getting their content from. They're getting it from social media. Because these are the conversations we've been having for the past five years. And I, I'm just really happy that it's finally coming out. And hopefully these children will get their, their just dues. And it won't just be dismissed like, oh, they're just crazy. They're just spoiled. Oh, they're rich. Just because somebody's rich or has money does not mean that what they went through is any less traumatic. So it, it was really sad just to like really watch that. And as far as Josh Peck, I mean, the, the fact that his name is, his last name is Peck, and we I understand he's not related to Brian Peck, but it's very weird that Josh Peck is like caping for like the Nickelodeon crew. And and I get it, maybe, you know, him and Drake Bell, just they, they don't have a good relationship. But the fact that he's like caping so hard is just very, very, very weird. Very weird. I see he's trending again. I'm at the check and see why he's trending now. But there was like another group, they came out and they were kind of, oh, Drake Bell is addressing him. This is, this is real. Oh, well, let's watch this breaking news, bitch. Let's go ahead and watch this. Let me go ahead and share my screen and mute my mic. I just want to let you guys know that um, this is really, uh, you know, processing this and going through this is a really emotional time. And um, a lot of it's very, very difficult. Uh, so not everything is put out to the public, um, but I just want you guys to know that he has reached out to me and um, it's it's been very uh, sensitive, um, but he has reached out to uh, uh, to talk with me and, and help me work through this and, and uh, has been really, really great. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that and to uh, take it a little easy on him. Your ass up out of here. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he's reaching out to you now because he's getting drug on social media. So don't don't tell us to take it easy on him. That's, that's, and that's the part I don't like is that the fans go hard defending you. Because let's not forget your ass, you know what I'm saying, caught up in some shit too with some underage, you know, with that underage girl. Um, don't tell folks to take it easy because people are triggered right now. And the fact that he's, you know, I love Dan Schneider's ass, people feel away. People feel away. So that's great that he reached out to you, but he reached out to you because he's getting drugged. He's been getting drugged ever since this came out. And he was trying to downplay, he was trying to downplay your pain. So that is why people were dragging him. So of course he's gonna reach out to you and say, Well, call your dogs off of me. So, boo, next. Um, yeah, Ned declassified, they were clowning him too. Let's go. I have that pulled up. I think it's, where is it at? Okay, here it is. We're going to watch Ned the Classified. They were saying some little slick stuff. Oh, this doesn't have a video. Okay, hold on. I thought it had the video. Let me see if I can find it. Because they were like on Twitter. I mean, key keying. I thought she had the video of man. If I can't find it, y'all might have to go search for it. Um, Let's see. Twitter should have it. Okay, here it is. Good old Twitter, child. You know, Twitter gonna be ready, honey. All right, let me pull this up here.
Okay. All right. Well, y'all just heard what he had to say. He was laughing. I mean, the fact that it didn't happen on y'all set, consider it a blessing. Instead of laughing at, you know, other people's pain and dismissing it, consider it a blessing that it didn't happen on your set. Don't think that you're better better than these kids who were abused and mistreated. Consider it a fact that you guys were blessed that you guys escaped that. So I don't find it funny at all. Y'all didn't hear anything? Oh, I don't know. That's weird. I don't know why, because it played for me. Okay, I don't know why I didn't play. Okay, let me play it again. Hold on, let me try and play it again. I don't know why I didn't play. Okay, we'll play it again. But now I hope that it doesn't um, say that it's echoing because I muted my mic, so I don't know why I didn't play. Daniel, I told you. <laughs> Daniel, we told you never to speak about that. Get back in your hole, Daniel, and give me your holes. Sorry, we shouldn't joke about this. Oh, we really shouldn't. This is awful. Oh, we should. doing this? Because this is about us. Listen, our set was not like that. Um, uh, and no, it's fucking awful. The 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 Drake Bell shit is a like that's crazy to hear. I I that is yeah. fucked, man. And that never came out, which is really wild. Okay, sorry, but I don't know why it. Cause usually y'all like mute your microphone so it doesn't echo. So that's what I did. But for some reason that didn't play. So that was weird. But like I said, they should consider themselves lucky. I don't think it's a laughing matter because you have a bunch of kids who are literally trauma traumatized and who are still going through it to this day. You know what I'm saying? And then you have all of us as fans because we were literally raised on Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. You know, like I guess for this generation, y'all have social media, y'all have TikTok and Snapchat and other things to kind of keep you guys entertained. Our entertainment was Nickelodeon. We'd play all day. And then, you know, when the streetlights come on, you would come home and that's when Snick started. Remember Nickelodeon was um, Nick at Night was Snick for the kids. And that was on Saturdays. And we'd watch Are You Afraid of the Dark, um, all that. It was like a whole lineup from like six until I think about nine o'clock. You know, and then during the day, there were all types of like different shows like Double Dare and things like that. So I think it's kind of tacky, um, you know, for Devin Werkheiser, whatever the hell his name is, um, to make fun of them. So people were dragging the hell out of him yesterday for that. They really were. So, yeah, it's been a lot. It's I've been out here for almost two hours. It's been a lot going on. Um, in the industry. Oh, the sun is moving. I see a bunch of light on my clothes. Child, it's time for me to shut down. Um, so I'm going to read these last few super chats and I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Uh, let's see. Amelia Minute says, hey T, you may already know John Christopher, the creator of Running Stimpy, was dating a 16 year old while he was in his 30s. Everyone at Nick knew. No, I didn't know that. Ooh, so he's the creator of Running Stimpy. No, my, no wonder why Poppy had some perverted shit in there. Nope, I did not know that. I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, when you look back and you watch some of like the old Running Stimpy cartoons, it like blows your mind that this was kids's, you know, cartoon, kids's television. But then it also lets it. I think the part that's kind of sad too is that it makes me feel like a lot of us were indoctrinated. And not even realizing that we're being indoctrinated and being exposed to like overtly sexual things and not even realizing it. Like we were getting hit from all angles. You know what I'm saying? From the shows that we were watching to the music that we were listening to. You know, and even though it was more covert, it was very sexual. Like a lot of the music back in the day may not have may not be as raunchy as it is today, because it was more covert, but a lot of it we were listening to a lot of very adult themed music when we were like in elementary and junior high and stuff like that, on top of like the shows and things that we were watching. And we wonder why, you know, a lot of us were damn teen parents and shit. So yeah, it's it's crazy just watching it. Um, just Me says, my friend from elementary school's dad worked in film and she used to tell me a lot of weird stuff that she overheard going on behind the scenes. Oh, wow. 
I can believe that. I, I definitely can. Um, Summer Williams says the cast of Victorious is very deep and scary too, disturbing. The cast were all drunk half the time of filming. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff about the Victorious cast as well. It's sad. Um, Ty Evequi, uh, oh, Ty Avec, <laughs> pronounced Ty Avec. I said Ty Evequi, Ty Avec from Discord. Sent $10, says T, don't they just need to say a couple of words to access the MK programming? If he accepted it, if he accepts it as a call, it may not be good for him. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I just feel like the whole situation goes a lot deeper in my personal opinion, especially when you're talking about people who have access to like children and I, I feel like there's more to the whole Brian Peck situation, especially with the John Wayne Gacy topic. Oh, the Ohio mom, thank you, um, Janine. I almost forgot about that. Yep, I gotta hit on the Ohio mom. Um, Ronald Harvey says, saw the documentary myself. It was very disturbing. Now at 40, seeing all the kids programmed we watched in the 90s were mind-blowing with what they got away with. Yeah, it's very hard to watch stuff now through adult eyes. That's why it's been so hard for me, like when I was editing the, the Diddy deep dives, because it's like, like that was very triggering. You know what I mean? Because it was just young people. They just wanted a shot at fame. And I think the problem with our generation and even now too, right, um, is that celebrity was like the be all, end all. You know what I'm saying? And like, you did not make it, quote unquote, unless you were a celebrity and on TV and acting and singing, things like that. Like celebrity was so, it was so put on a pedestal. And because of that, people were willing to take on the abuse and, and do things that they wouldn't do. And you also had an environment where people lacked integrity and it was okay. Because if you want this fame and you want this celebrity, you're going to be willing to do anything to get it. And I think that was the problem. And that's why they got away with a lot of this stuff is because we idolize celebrity, celebrity culture, you know what I'm saying, Hollywood. So that's the part that's really sad, especially for these young people. Um, let me see here. Uh, Tiniest Kiwi ever sent $20. Thank you so much, sis. Appreciate you. So let me go ahead and talk about the Ohio mom really quick before I get up out of here. So if you guys do not know, um, this lady here, what is her name? Chris, uh, Christelle Candelero was sentenced to life in prison because basically her baby starved to death. This case was so disturbing. Let me go ahead and share my screen really quick here. Give me just a second. She has died after being left alone while her mother vacationed in Puerto Rico, detectives say. With no food, maybe milk, the clothing she had on and the diaper she was wearing. Police in Cleveland, Ohio, say the 16-month-old had been left in her crib for 11 days. This baby loved her mother. She needed her mother, and her mother betrayed her. The baby's mother, Crystal Candelario, has been sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for her actions. This is probably one of the most difficult, horrific cases to listen to, to hear, and to see. At Candelario's sentencing, she spoke using a translator. Le pido perdón a Dios y a mi hija. I ask forgiveness from God and from my daughter, Jaylee. Her defense attorney believes mental health played a factor in her decisions, telling WOIO. I mean, just by reading the headline, you could tell that, you know, this is probably... A baby has died at... Okay. Now, a lot of people are trying to say, oh, this is mental illness, her mental health, and all that stuff. Um, no, it's not. This is a, a trash-ass mom who decided to go to Puerto Rico for 11 
days. Okay? Think about that. She lives in Ohio. She decided to go to Puerto Rico for 11 days with a 16-month-old baby left at home. What did she think this baby was going to do for herself? Did she think the baby was going to get up out the crib and change her own diapers, feed herself, clothe herself? And when you look at her pictures of her in Puerto Rico with her friends, oh, she was having a good old funky time, twerking, drinking, living it up, and not thinking one time, I have a baby at home. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And can we stop blaming everything on mental illness and, oh, you know, this person is going through it and, you know, things have, no, this is not mental illness. This is pure evil. I can only imagine the pain and suffering that baby went, went through. And they were saying that on the ring alarm, you could hear that baby crying all day and night for like the first few days, the baby was just screaming, crying and nobody thought, okay, I keep hearing a baby. This baby keeps crying. Nobody's attending to it. What's going on? I really wish, not blaming the neighbors, but I really wish somebody would have heard that baby's cries and thought to go next door and find out what was going on. She also has parents. Her parents also testified. Not blaming the parents, but again, I'm going to ask questions. I, I don't know. Do, do I just, am I just weird? Like, even when I go out of town, my mom is asking about my kids. And I have a grown son and a, and a, and a teenager. She's like, where are the boys? What, what are they going to be at this weekend? Da, 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 da. Like, it's a family theme when I'm going out of town. And then not only that, she'll pop up and make sure they're straight. They'll stop by her house. Like, it, it just, I don't understand how, like, there's a 16-month-old in the mix and the grandparents aren't asking, okay, I'm looking at your social media. Obviously, your daughter is not with you. Where's our grandchild? She could have literally dropped this baby off at the grandparents. They seemed like nice grandparents. Like they would have took care of the baby had they known. So this was just some evil shit. I personally feel like she was trying to kill this baby. I feel like she didn't want the baby. Maybe there was some mess with the baby daddy. I don't know. But this is not... I'm going to go to Puerto Rico for 11 days and keep my baby in a playpen and just kick it. I believe this was all the way intentional. What a horrible death for this child. 11 days. I'm sure she died within the first three. No food, no water, nobody picking her up. And at 16 month old, she's old enough. She has enough worth all to just... Be like, where's my mom? You know, I'm not eating. Where's my favorite bottle? Where's my favorite cup? Like, oh my God, I, I just could not even imagine the pain and suffering this little girl went through. Some people do not need to be parents at all. I don't want to hear her Spanish apologies. I don't give a fuck about that. Bitch, go to jail and throw away the key. You're trash. And I'm glad that the judge gave her life in prison and did not spare her any of that nonsense. Oh, it's mental health. Mental health is real. People go through stuff. But let's stop using that as a crutch. Because I know people who have bipolarism and mental health issues. And they're not leaving their babies in playpens for 11 days to go shake their ass in Puerto Rico. It's funny that mental health is always part of the equation when it comes to personal responsibility. But when they want to go out and run the streets or go shake their ass, or go get into some fuck shit, all of a sudden their health is, is their, their, men, their mentality is healthy as fuck. All of a sudden they can cope, <laughs> okay? When there's a check to be had, all of a sudden they can, you know, get the work done. So I'm not buying that. I don't want to hear nothing about mental health. This is demonic and evil. It's just straight up evil, what was done to this baby. So I'm just like, I'm tired of like the mental health excuse. Mental health is, is not an excuse for like bad behavior or shitty parenting. And then another question is, where's the daddy? Where's the baby dad? Was he involved in this child's life? The child is young. It's not like the child is 16. Where is he to say, well, where's my daughter? I didn't see my daughter this weekend. You know, people just having kids, but not willing to work on a relationship. And make sure that even if we're not together, I need to know what's going on with my child. So a lot of people felt this young girl. And it's really sad. It really is. Uh, who found the baby? She found the baby. She came home and was, for some reason, just shocked that her child was dead. And so then 
she proceeded to dress the child because the child, of course, was filthy, had been rolling around in her own, you know, feces and, you know, probably was throwing up. So the child was filthy and she decided to basically dress the child and act like she just found the child. And the child had been dead. Full rigor mortis, everything, you know, so just, just sick. I feel like she meant to kill this child. I really do. Because none of it makes any sense. Okay, let me read these last few super chats. Let me get up out of here. Um, Marquis says, in order to get back in the Discord, you must repay for this month. Once you were booted out, it canceled your subscription. That is fact. So just know that when you're sending the email. So thank you, Marquis. Um, let's see here. Tammy says, what do you think about Kobe Bryant's parents selling his championship rings? I don't think anything about it. That was their child, their business. And Kobe Bryant's parents have always sold his memorabilia. So to me, the outrage is weird because even Kobe got on them for that. But I, I'm not shocked. It, but at the end of the day, it's their child. So I'm not shocked by anything his parents do. All right, y'all. So I'm about to get up out of here. I've been out here for two hours. So I'm going to go ahead and head out. The sun is starting to set, so I'm getting a bunch of light in here. But thank you guys for joining me today on this stream. I know it was a lot earlier than usual, but I think we hit on a lot of good topics. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to go ahead and head up out of here. So let me go ahead and um, pull up my outro. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I always forget that button. 